My number one favorite motion VFX pack, MKBHD, 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 MKBHD. Recently, Motion VFS sent me two of their plugin packs to try my hands on and review it. And yes, this is not a sponsored video. This is my honest review about these two plugin packs. So the two that we'll be talking about is MKBHD and also MTutorial. In this video, I'll be walking you guys through the few that I've been using for the past two weeks in my editing. So when you download and install, you can find it on the left side of the software. So you click on titles and generator sidebar, you scroll and then you can find it on that side. You click on that and the first that I'll be talking about is background two. You just drag and drop in the timeline. So as you can see, it has this dot to it and also some grain onto it. Usually what I do is just click on that, go to the right side and click on test inspector side. Then I take off animation in and out. So it will just be a normal background with the moving dot. So this, let me just take it on and show you guys. When you turn on animation in, it has this cool animation that comes in, but usually I just want it to be a normal background. So I just take it off and have it look like that. Then with the dot colors, you can change the colors on this side too. You can go for red if you want a red dot to it. And then when you scroll down, you can change the background color of that too. Let's say if you want it to be purple, you can change that. But usually I just leave it on default settings. And then with this, I just animate some images on the screen. So let's just say I go to my media side. I have this image I want to animate in. Just drag and drop on it. Then go to somewhere here, click on that, go to the right side on the transform, make a keyframe on position. Then I go somewhere in the middle and make another keyframe on position. Then I'll click on this arrow to go to the first keyframe we created. And then on the Y axis, I'll just drag it down. So with this, I'll show you, it comes in and this is gonna be the background of this very image that we animated on the screen. Next on the list, I use this call to action a lot, this very particular one. I just drag and drop in the timeline. And Marcus Brownie MKBHD has this red color and I usually use yellow, that's my kind of brown color. So I'll just click on that, go to the right side, scroll down and then change the color of that to yellow. So any brown color that you want or your own color, you can use that because red is kind of linked to Marcus Brownie a lot. So it doesn't look so much like him. And also when you scroll up, you can change the name on this side too. But with this, I'll just leave it as subscribe since that's what I'm calling for the viewers to do. And one thing that I like about Motion VFS is most of their plugins, you can use the on-screen controls to adjust the size and also the placement. And that saves a lot of time when you are editing. So with this, I can just use that to place it at the top here or move it to the center or also to this right corner and use this side to increase the size of it and also hold this side and turn it to rotate it and that saves you a lot of time. So next you can see we have features and also intros that I don't use at all in my edit. It has too much of Marcus Brownie to that. Then when you scroll down, you can see it has lower tiers and titles too. But this very part is what I use a lot in my edit. So with this, I'm gonna show you guys which ones I use. I use this a lot, that split screen. Let me drag that and drop in the timeline. As you can see, it comes in from the right side. So with this, if you want it to come in from the left side, go to the right side of the software on split screen orientation, click on that and change it to the left. And then when you look at it, it comes in from the left side. So with this, let's say if I want to add a video to this side, I'll go to my timeline, then click on the split screen, go to drop zone source, click on that, and then you can select the source from your timeline. So with this, I'll just select this side and apply clip. And now I'll play and show you guys it comes in nicely on the left side. Also with that, you can just change the size of it. Let's say you want it to be really small, you can just reduce the size of it on this side. And also you can increase the size of it too. And one cool thing about this plugin is you can easily make the drop zone to really take a major part on the screen. Also you can make it take a very small portion on the screen. So let's just place it this way and play and show you guys. 
it comes in and it takes a major part on the screen and this is really clean and professional it's going to save you lots of time so the second we're going to talk about is M tutorial. You can also find that on your title and your generator side. You click on that. So the first I've been using a lot is the selection line. I'll just drag and drop in the timeline. So with this, let's just say if I want to circle some part on the screen that I want the viewers to look at, I'll use the on-screen controls and move it to that very side. Then when you go to the right side, I don't like this test at the top. So usually I just delete that and turn it off on this side too. So it's just going to be the lines. And then I'll scroll down and change the color of it. I usually go with yellow with this kind of style. When you look on the screen, you can use the on-screen controls to adjust the circle or the lines to how you want it to look like. So with this, I'm just going to go for something like this. And then if you want to add some drop shadow to it, you can go down here and turn it on and it's going to add right there. And also you can change the color to it. And one cool thing about these very lines is you can break the lines. Let me show you guys. You go to close lines on and off. If you don't want it to be close, you can take it off. And when you look carefully on this side, it has this line separated. So with this, I can just make them cross each other and you can create some cool style to it. Then I'll play and show you guys how it looks like. It comes in and it cross each other. And then you can add some sound effects to it to make it come alive. And then when you scroll down, you have backgrounds. I don't really use these ones. And then we have focus. This is the one I've been using a lot in my edit. So with this, I'll just drag this one on top of it. Caption frame, that's the one I've been using a lot. When you look at it, it has this focus on this very side so you can draw the viewer's attention to whatever you're talking in the video. And also you can use the on-screen controls, adjust it to whatever you want to highlight out. So let's say I want to highlight this very video. I'm just going to adjust to that and play and show you guys. It comes in and it highlights that. And at the same time, it darkens this very side on the screen. Then when you go to the right side, you can see this test under, I don't really like that. So I'll just turn it off. Then when you scroll down the frame color, if you don't want the border lines to be white, you can change it on the frame color. Just click on that and choose the color that you want it to be. I usually go with yellow or white on this very one. Then you can add some sound effect to it, some glitch sound effects to make this stand out. And now my honest opinion about these two plugin packs. With MKBHD, I think it's a must for every Final Cut Pro user out there. It's gonna speed up your work. It's gonna make your work come out looking clean and professional. But with M-Tutorial, you should save your money on that. I think majority of us out there who are not doing client-based work, you can really save your money on M-Tutorial. You don't need that. Now another good plugin from Motion VFS, which is absolutely free. You can find it in this video. Catch you guys on the next one. Peace.